Mate, would you just like to introduce ourselves to our audience? Yes, my name is Tamim Antoniades and I'm the Chief Creative Ninja at Ninja Theory. Okay, and the game that you've been showcasing today is Enslaved Odyssey to the West. Yes. Uh, now, can you just tell a brief bit about introducing the game? About the game? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, um, it's kind of this mishmash of different ideas. It's based <laughs> on a 400-year-old novel called Journey to the West, which we know more, uh, in the UK more as um, Monkey, the TV Monkey, series. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Monkey, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but total sci-fi take on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's set in a dystopian future okay. where the magic of the book is replaced by tech and uh, the, the demons replaced by uh, military droids. I okay, guess. now this is a story, as you said, it's an ancient story that's been retold in a number of different ways yeah. before, but what made you decide to go for, for this tact and go for the, you know, the future post-apocalyptic type program? Yeah, you know, I kind of wish there was like a deep, meaningful reason why, mm. but the truth is, I asked my art director what kind of game would he like to do next, and he said okay. sci-fi. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and then the book, I had read yep. it, and I thought it was just an amazing book, mm -hmm. like just as a work of fiction is yeah. just incredible yeah. and I think from the West we tend to um, folk, uh, get a lot of the games can be um, sourced back to a few different tropes mm -hmm. like um, aliens yep. you know for the marine thing yep. the space marine you've got um, Mad Max for the kind of post-apocalyptic desert landscape um, Blade Runner for the corporate type thing and uh, you know there's this, yeah. and Lord of the Rings for all the dungeon -y Stuff. Yeah, yeah, so it's right. nice to have a source that's not those things. <laughs> I think it, it, it totally confounds the expectation of what post-apocalyptic mm. means. Um, and I think um, there's several reasons we did that. One is our art director, he just loves colour, Alex Taney. He just loves mm -hmm. colour and uh, light and, uh, you know, he, he loves that kind yeah. of feel. But also, like, we saw a documentary called Life After People okay. and um, on the Discovery Channel, which shows what the world would look like without people there. Okay, okay. And it looks... I lush. remember they had, they had yeah. they had the timescape things where it was all showing everything yeah. growing up and it was like, I remember that. But also, because we're, we're fans of, like, um, stuff like Miyazaki movies, which are okay. always colourful and, mm -hmm. you know, there's yeah. a lot of nature in them. So it's a combination of all of those. Okay. And uh, just in the developer session you were just showing us, you showed us some uh, test widgets and stuff that you were doing and uh, some of the, uh, the reference material that you're doing, you splice together, you know, some uh, stuff from movies and stuff to give you an idea of where you're going. Um, what other influences uh, influenced, you know, the look and feel of the game? Um, there was um, Kashan, that's a Japanese movie. Yeah, uh, I saw something I didn't recognise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was Man vs. Machine, it was uh, pretty okay. cool. Yep. Um, like, one of my favourite games was Another World on the Amiga. Right, okay, um, you said that. that, whole, that yeah, like that whole atmosphere, the mm. whole buddy yeah. kind of thing was by. I don't know where it was. <laughs> like, even Heavenly Sword and Eureka yeah. Kai, yeah. that kind of relationship. Okay. Um, just trying to take that, go deeper. And I have mentioned online, much to everyone's amusement, uh, Moonlighting mm -hmm. with Bruce Willis and Chival Sybil Shepherd. Okay, who's like, that? I love the <laughs> Yeah, I love the banter and things. <laughs> Oh, so that, that plays a lot of the back and forth between uh, Trip and Monkey then? Yeah, to yeah. an extent. Not, not quite as a comically fast, mm -hmm. you know, farcical, but yeah. Well, then you've got Pixie for the comical elements. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Like that, so, okay. yeah. And um, so how do you decide on, uh, when you're designing the game, how do you decide on, like, this character is going to have these particular attributes and this character is going to be the one that, that influences the gameplay in such a way? And who, who decides that and, and how do you decide it? We, uh, we, well, we brainstorm, and uh, we knew that Monkey needed to be the muscle, and yeah. Trip needed to be the brains, and they all both had to be important. So we brainstorm a whole bunch of ideas for each of them, mm. and then it's a matter of just trying them out. Yeah, uh, that's because you have to, because she enslaves you, mm. you have to be able to have empathy for her. So yeah. if she was this, you know, stuck-up, cool, yeah, sassy thing. girl, you would absolutely <laughs> despise her. Yeah. Once you understand that she's doing it because she has no choice mm. and she's actually really yeah, you know, yeah. sorry about it. Well, you trying know. to get back home basically after yeah. being kidnapped by the uh, enslavers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, once you kind of get that and you kind of, you might not like her at the beginning but you understand why she's done it and then yeah. you kind of break, break that kind of distaste towards her down as you play the game yeah. and you kind of, um, hopefully, if we do it right, mm you will not want to be without her. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, Heavenly Sword um, introduced some um, very different control methods and stuff as well, with the, like, the use of the six axis and stuff like that. I haven't seen any, anything like that before. Is that something you've dialed back on a little bit? Well, or? the thing is, 
the six axis thing is, is a bit weird um, in its reception because mm. even though we had the option to switch it off and on yeah most people just went which I didn't it. actually find out yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but um, some people absolutely loved it mm. and said it's the best use of six axis ever yeah but a lot but also a large portion of people mm -hmm. absolutely detested it okay so when you do those kinds of six axis type mm -hmm. stuff you're immediately dividing your audience okay. which isn't good and it's yeah. kind of funny that um, over the last few years. I've not seen very much. And so how do you decide that, um, that this is the right control for this style of game and stuff like that as well with uh, what you're you doing? Start, I mean, you start with the controls. You build the abilities from the pad. Um, so we have a general idea of what we want Monkey to do and then, I don't know, we just build it up. Like the menu system for controlling trip. Um, it's really touchy feely. It's mm. not. There's no set rule. Okay. It's just like so. so you'll like. develop it and then iterate on it. Yeah, we do, do loads of again. little yeah. prototypes and then get everyone to try it out. So mm. what, is, what feels more natural? What feels, you know. Okay. So how do you um, get the the you know the player to interact with that cinema in in a better way than than other people have done in the past, perhaps? Um, our game, our cutscene characters, mm -hmm. and our in-game characters yeah. are, are identical, which isn't the case in a lot of games. Mm -hmm. uh, but it means that we can cut in and out yeah. at any point. Okay. So, you, so in the game, you'll see when he does like a finishing blow, he yeah. sometimes cut in and That's show you a close nice slow <laughs> in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's that philosophy of keeping things short mm -hmm. and diving in and out where it feels right, as opposed to extended cutscenes, which okay. broke this project. We're constantly, as you're playing it, we're just cutting away mm. from you. And um, it seems to be, I mean, it seems to be, if you do it at the right point, if you follow the rules yep. of cinema and editing, if you do it at the right point, it doesn't actually, you don't actually notice it, mm -hmm. which is bizarre, because the instinct yeah. is that if you take the camera away, um, you ruin the flow of the mm -hmm. game. But if you do it right, it doesn't seem to ruin the flow of the game. It seems to draw people in more yeah. and, and get them more involved. Okay. And now, obviously, you're working with uh, Andy Circus again, mm. um, having worked with him on the Heavenly Sword. And yeah. that, that must be a good thing for you. Obviously, you said you know it's brilliant character acting. But so, uh, how many actors do you got uh, had in in the team? And, and and is it just mainly the three of them yeah. as well, basically? It's, it's just those three actually. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and really small. Throughout, it's just those three. I mean, yeah. well, it's good that you're concentrating on developing those characters yeah. as much as possible in the game, basically, as well. And now, one thing I wanted to know as well, um, uh, are there, is there a bigger kind of um, enemy to the game as well? I mean, we're fighting mechs throughout the game. Is there, they haven't shown too much of the, the wider story, I'm guessing, and stuff like that. Yeah, and you know what, like, even in, uh, everyone that's played the game, mm keeps their mouth shut because, <laughs> because there is something out there. It, yeah, yeah. There, there is okay. something out there. It's worth it's worth going through right. the journey. Okay, well um the game's out very soon in shops. Uh you can give actual release dates just in case anyone uh, yeah, so is unaware. It's out on it's out on October the eighth. So you reportedly should be heading to the shops pretty soon. Yes. Getting their journey done. <laughs> Indeed, thank you. Okay, well brilliant, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Right. I look forward to playing the game myself. <laughs>